It was a warm, late summer's day. Outside, the cicadas rasped their buzzy tune. The children entered the classroom with a joyous ruckus, jostling and poking at their neighbors, sounding for all the world like a chattering group of birds. Only the occasional words or phrases were spoken loud enough for someone outside the group to understand. A shrill laugh punctuated their chatter as they settled into the room. Their teacher smiled good-naturedly, listening for the natural law that experience had taught him would occur as students find their places so he can make a smooth transition to order. The room was bare of the usual classroom furniture, and in their place rest coral risers, a piano bench, and against the wall, an old but stately piano. Bare wood shows exposed around the edges where years of use has rubbed away the once rich brown stain that covers the rest of its surface. The crevices and rare untouched portions still showed the original deep gloss that once shone over the whole of its body. The slat that once covered over the piano's inner workings of strings and hammers was lost many years ago, not long after its hinges were broken. But it's better this way. The movement of the little hammers hitting the many strings, each in unison with a resonating note, is mesmerizing. But still more mesmerizing is what lays just inside the inner workings not quite muffling the little hammers, just behind the keys lays the most intriguing portion of the piano, the piano's cat. He was soft, with hazy gray fur and eyes strikingly yellow, if you could catch him with them open. As he lay in the crevice, behind the keys and before the strings, he might let his tail or a stray paw dangle out over the keys but ever so gingerly, never pressing the keys, never interrupting the music. The teacher turned to the piano, and as he played, the children's voices joined in chorus. The piano's cat opened his eyes briefly and then closed them again, with an expression that for all the world, you could swear was a smile. A smile that other cats reserve only for lazing in the sun, or a warm spot on their human's lap. A cat's smile that is accompanied by the gentle flick of the end of their tail. This cat reserved his smile for the music that came from the piano. The cat didn't belong to the teacher or the class. He was simply there. He moved in with the piano. And although the class cared for and loved him, like many cats, he remained somewhat aloof. It was clear he stayed for the piano. New students would often ask the teacher about his sleepy pet, and he enjoyed telling this story. You see, this was no ordinary cat. This cat was the reincarnation of a once very notable pianist. In his former life, he had played for many audiences, in many concert halls, on many pianos. But this piano was special. It was the piano he learned on in his school. This was the piano he first practiced chords on and learned to play all his first songs on. As he grew older and he bought his own piano, he began to write his own songs, but he still thought of that old school piano. He remembered feeling the glossy finish over the natural grain of the wood, although it was already quite worn even then. He remembered the way the keys felt under his fingertips, the gentle smoothness of the ivory, and the way the strings resonated in the old wooden body. He held such fondness for this piano that he saved all his money and bought a new piano for the school, 
and in return, they allowed him to take the old piano. Reunited with his old friend, he wrote his first successful song that brought him into the realm of notable pianists. And over the years, he wrote many more songs, including his most famous, All on This Piano. As he grew older, and it became more difficult for him to play in concert, he still managed to enjoy playing on his piano. When he passed away, he left his piano to this school so that new students could enjoy its sweet melody and learn to love music as much as he did. Because of his love for music and his piano, the gods allowed him to come back as a cat so he could continue to enjoy the music played on its keys. So now, he lazes in the piano, and although he can't play himself, he can enjoy the playing of others and hum along to the music. That's why he only purrs when someone plays on its keys. As the teacher finishes telling the story of his grandfather's piano, yellow eyes open in the soft gray cat's sleepy face. He looks around the room in a groggy manner of feigned disinterest. His right eye winks, then both eyes narrow, as if to go back to sleep. But they stay halfway open, black and gray fur-like eyelashes obscure their color as he continues to watch the storyteller and listeners. The teacher turns back to the piano and pets his head, right in the soft fuzzy part between his ears. Then the music lesson begins again, and as eyes close, he lays his head back down and begins to hum to the music. Thank you.